first time we did this. It was quite a few years ago, and I think I had the men sing Trust and Obey. So I'm, I'm getting kind of it. gratitude to you, who formed and knitted each of us in a mother's womb. We pray you give each mom strength. We ask you to be the daily bread of tired mothers. May each mother find rest in you. Amen. Join me in the responsive Psalter reading, Psalm 85, found on pages 806 in the Red Hymnal. We will read verses 8 through 13. Pause while congregation turns to the page. <laughs> Let me hear what God will speak, for the Lord will speak peace to his people to his faithful, to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord and make God's footsteps a way. Bill will now share our children's sermon.
<laughs> God loves all mothers, and he wants us to love our mothers too. He says, her children stand and bless her. What are some of the ways you can bless your mom this week?
Please join me in the responsive prayers of the people found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Lord, make me the instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for Phyllis Fife, our troops around the world, Sharon Duraslapa, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
invitations to Christian stewardship. For those who are online, joining us online, you can um, hit the uh, button on there somewhere and be able to give your tithes online. Uh, for those that are here, um, you can drop it off in uh, the offering plate that's coming. Um, or you can mail it here to the church or drop it in the slot uh, at the door. Um, while our ushers are coming forward, we will be singing from our black candle, The Faith We Sing, page 2065, More Precious Than Silver, twice over. <laughs>
please join me in the unison prayer for illumination found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Send, Send your, your spirit, spirit among us, us, O God, as we meditate on your love. Prepare our minds to hear your word, move our hearts to embrace what we hear, and strengthen our will to follow your way. This we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Please listen to the words of Jesus from the Bible. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He lops off every branch that doesn't produce, and he prunes those branches that bear fruit for even larger crops. He has already tended you by pruning you back for greater strength and usefulness by means of the commands I gave you. Take care to live in me and let me live in you. For a branch can't produce fruit when severed from the vine, nor can you be fruitful apart from me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him shall produce a large crop of fruit. For apart from me, you can't do a thing. If anyone separates from me, he is thrown away like a useless branch, withers, and is gathered into a pile with all the others and burned. But if you stay in me and obey my commands, you may ask any request you like, and it will be granted. My true disciples produce bountiful harvests. This brings great glory to my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now Pastor Tierra will bring her message, Roots. Nature is the greatest teacher. 
We may not recognize how vital and important nature is because today we live in a world where many have become greedy and want to make quick profits and achieve quicker results. In one way or another, our actions disrupt the ecological balance and not only pollute the physical environment, but also stim stimulate negative emotions on a subtle level within ourselves and also in those around us. These negative energies expanded and compounded again and again are the root cause of much of the violence and misery in this world. Our connection with the environment is our first level of experience and one of the most important. All throughout the Bible, metaphors are used in connection with nature. And if our environment is clean and positive, it has a positive impact on all the other layers of our existence. As a result, they come into balance and we experience a greater sense of peace and connection within ourselves and with others around us. Intimate relationship with the environment is built into the human psyche. Historically, nature, mountains, rivers, trees, and the sun, and even the moon have been honored in ancient cultures. It's only when we start moving away from our connection to nature and ourselves that we begin polluting and destroying the environment destroying ourselves. We need to revive these attitudes that foster our connection with nature. Because nature is more than just life sustaining. Nature is also a great teacher. Think of a tree. The roots of a tree are the parts that don't bear any nodes, nor do they ever bear leaves. They are the base of the tree. Just like a house, the stronger the base, the stronger the structure will be. Without the roots, there will, there, the tree would not be able to survive. The root system of a tree isn't healthy. The tree itself won't be healthy and could become diseased and die. It's critical to make sure that the tree roots are in good shape. Trees need proper water, minerals, and nutrients for survival. How does a tree get these things? by absorbing them through their roots. The roots absorb these directly from the soil and into the stem. From the stem, the water, minerals, and nutrients are dispersed throughout the tree into the branches, the leaves, and any budding flowers on the tree, any fruit growing on the tree, and so on. The point is, the stronger the root system is, the harder it will be for the tree to be uprooted or moved. So as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Jesus is the root of our spiritual tree. Jesus should be the base of our tree, and the stronger our relationship is with him, the stronger our life will be. Jesus is the reason we are able to survive life, the reason we grow and have the health we have. If our spiritual root system is damaged, diseased, or in bad shape, we are in bad shape and our actions and spiritual fruit are diseased. And without intervention, it dies. Jesus stores up reserved energy for us to remember when we are going through testing seasons where we feel like we don't hear from God. We can keep going for a season because we can pull from all that we have stored up in our spirit. And we can do all these things because Jesus anchors us. He is the root to our spiritual tree system. John poses challenging questions to us, the contemporary Christian community, about our self-identity. What does it mean for the church to live as the branches of Christ's vine? That would mean God is the gardener, Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. Success in raising any crop depends largely on the skill of the farmer or gardener. The relation of the believer to God is that of the vine to the owner of the vineyard. He tends it, waters it, and endeavors to protect it and cultivate it so that it will produce its maximum yield. 
I can see now in my sanctified imagination. God loves the world so much that God shows up in the vineyard, shows up in the field to teach Jesus what he must do to prepare us for membership into the kingdom. So God starts pouring into Jesus. God speaks to Jesus. God believes in Jesus. God loves Jesus. And Jesus, the vine, starts to grow. And the more Jesus, the vine grows, the more Jesus starts to understand who he is and of whom he is from. Now Jesus has confidence. He starts telling the weeds who he is in the context of his relationship with God. Jesus says, I am the step between God and all the fruit. And though that's just what I think and what goes on in my imagination, there is a genuine stock in Jesus being the middle ground between God and us, the vine. One must plant the right kind of vine or tree in order to ensure proper quality of fruit. For no fruit can be better than, that, that, than the vine that produces it. Jesus says, I am the true vine. Unless the believer is vitally connected with him, the quality of his faithfulness will be unacceptable. There may be, there may be many branches, but if we are to bear the right kind of fruit, we must be a part of the real, the true vine. So I guess we are left with one question. What does that mean for me? When we find ourselves going through difficult seasons or situations, one question we should ask ourselves is, am I being pruned? Pruning is the removal of dead wood and the trimming of live wood so that its potential for fruit bearing will be improved. Pruning is necessary for any vine. Dead wood is worse than fruitless, fruitlessness, for dead wood can harbor disease and decay. An untrimmed vine will develop long, rambling branches that produce little fruit because most of the, to the strength of the vine is given to the growing wood. The gardener is concerned that the vine be healthy and productive. This caring process is a picture of God's dealings with us, with human beings. He removes the dead wood from his church and disciples uh, disciplines the, the lives of believers so that they are directed into fruitful activity. The means by which pruning or cleaning is done is the word of God. It condemns sin. It inspires holiness. It promotes growth. As Jesus applies the words God gave him to the lives of the disciples, we undergo a pruning process that removes evil from us and conditions us for further service. But continuous production depends on constant union with the source of fruitfulness. Branches that are severed from the parent stock may produce leaves temporarily, but inevitably they will wither because there is no source of life to sustain them, and they will never bear fruit. The effectiveness of believers depends on our receiving the constant flow of life from Christ. That means bearing fruit is not only possible, but certain if the branches, branch remains in union with the vine, the uniformity of quantity and quality is not promised. But if, life, uh, if the life of Christ permeates a disciple, fruit will be inevitable. Failure to maintain a vital connection brings its own penalty, rejection, and uselessness. The connection is maintained by obedience in prayer. To remain in Christ and to allow his words, word means to be in constant contact with him by prayer. As long as we are seeking the Lord's will for our lives, Jesus promises to grant our request that will help accomplish this end. The proof of discipleship is bearing fruit. Just as Jesus glorified God by his life, so his disciples would glorify God by theirs. All we have to do is stay rooted in Christ. Amen. Please join me in our red hymnal as we sing page 380. There, there's within my heart a melody, verse 1, 3, and 5.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Service is now over. Go in peace. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you.